I'm a little bit nervous doing this. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Overland Trails Adventures. Today is the next project on the LU Cabin build out. Um, we're going to solve one of our long-standing problems of running out of power while we're at camp, uh, batteries running low, things being, um, you know, not being powered up as much as we need them to, or sustaining power with, you know, the refrigerator, camera batteries, drone batteries, you know, being able to power lights, you know, throughout a, a, maybe a day or two stay. Today we're going to work on installing solar panels on the top of the LU cabin. We've already mounted the bars on the roof that are going to hold the panels in place. But, uh, but today's video is talking about the components and putting those in place and then testing those out. So here you see we have two 100 watt Renogy Eclipse panels. I'll explain why we went with Renogy a little bit later. Uh, we have a connector that's going to go from the uh, Anderson connector to the solar panels. Uh, the alley cabin comes pre-wired with uh, the wiring that goes down into the cabin um, and an Anderson connector. So they're really awesome about that. From here, we're going to use these two Y splitters. This will bring in two positives and two negatives into one cable. So we're going to run those together. And these are the brackets that we're going to use to mount them to the roof or to the roof panel of uh, the bars. Let's dig in. Hopefully it'll warm up because it's a chilly day in Texas. And once we get all of this installed on the roof, I'll take you inside the LU cabin to show you how we wired in um, the power from the solar panels through the pre-wiring uh, into cabling inside to the manager 30 where it charges the batteries. And um, I'll show you the panel and we'll start looking at the power, how much I'm getting just sitting in my driveway. And the reason why we went with the Renergy panels, the Eclipse model is the high efficiency rate. Uh, most solar panels what we've seen are around 19 to 20 efficiency rating. These are rated at 22%, so they should be a little bit more efficient, give us a little bit more power, uh, you know, just sitting in the, the great outdoors. Okay, to do the brackets on the solar panel, you're going to need a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter wrench and a 10 millimeter socket. You can use two wrenches or whatever, but you're going to need the wrench to get up under here to be able to hold the bolt and tighten it in. Before we get to that, I want to show you how to operate this cable where you're joining in series the panels, basically making them operate both as in, in series. With the connector, you're able to take your negative and your positive and connect those and create a dual connector. All of this you can get from the Renogy website. This is going to allow me to connect two positives, and two negatives to the system. Now, the way these brackets work is these are the ones designed for just general use, um, usually house use. We're going to have to drill a hole through the center of this or use one of these holes on the outside. I prefer one in the middle to gain some stability. Uh, to mount them to the rails on the top of the LU cabin because it uses a rail system where we're going to have to put this in parallel with the rail and where we can slide it back and forth however we need to. Now to mount this to this takes the short nuts that come in the pack with a nut as well as a spring nut and a washer. You're going to take the nut, put it in the bracket, take the spring washer, put the spring washer on and put the spacer on and then while you're holding that screw the nut on once again we're going to have to drill a hole through here so the nut and the and the groove on top can hold these panels in place there'll be four of these on each corner alrighty up here on the roof of the cabin we've got to reposition these bars here so we got to undo them and it's got to slide about eight inches up. And then we'll adjust the next one. I think it's 27 inches from center to center to match the brackets. All right, guys, we've got the brackets on in all four corners. You can see what it looks like here with these brackets. And you can see they're attached to the aluminum frame facing down, so they'll be able to bolt up to the uh, crossbars very really easy. I still have to drill the holes to make sure that we're gonna line them up up top. It may not look like it, but I am running out of daylight, so I'm going to continue the rest of this project of mounting these things up there tomorrow.
Alrighty guys, it's been a few days and um, the challenge has been the weather. So the plan today is to get these mounted up, wired up and tightened down and tested. And uh, I've changed the configuration up here a little bit. I'm still going with brackets on the sides in the back. This will be towards the back of the vehicle. But I've put the brackets instead of being on the side here in the front of the vehicle to being in the front of the panel itself. Now what this is going to do is allow the leading edge here to deflect a little more wind and also um, kind of give it more leading edge strength. So the wind when it's hitting underneath this it's not going to try to lift it or tear it up or something like that and maybe even deflect if something hits it here deflect it a little bit more. Let's go outside, get the truck set up, and start putting these on. These panels are kind of heavy, so I'm a little bit nervous doing this by myself. Alrighty. Okay, so as you can see from my bolts, I'm going to go with... These are number eight uh, end bolts with a good washer and a lock washer and I am doing a threaded lock nut to be able to really get this tightened down where I feel okay driving 80 miles an hour down the road with these things I'm gonna try to secure them as best I can The most important thing about this whole job is really the wiring. You want to make sure the wiring is tucked in and secured. And Now the moment of truth. Let's plug some stuff in. Now I've got the inside Anderson connector to the system disconnected. I'm going to go ahead and connect this one here. That way it's, it's all connected and I can then measure where I want these systems to set, or these solar panels to set. So it's kind of hard to see under here. What I did was I took the negative and the positive from the left panel to the right panel, and then wired them into the joiner, the connector where both positives and both negatives go, and then wired that into this cable here to tie them all into the Red Rock Manager 30. Now we're going to center up these solar panels to where it looks like it actually was meant to be done. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to take the outside and connect it to the inside to the Manager 30. Okay, we're immediately able to see getting 8.2 watts in from solar. Um, so that's a little bit of you know charge coming in. It's going to vary a little bit. The system has to get used to it. Um, about 2 watts from solar right now which is nothing, but on a cloudy day like today, I think it's a good test. Nothing really going on there. Everything is wired up as it should. Solar power is coming in here. Okay, that about gets us going in the solar panel world. Uh, we'll do some real testing uh, in the field and let you know how the two 100 watts should be able to keep up with the two 100 amp hour batteries and give us plenty of power to go and uh, go off grid. Okay, that about wraps it up for the solar panel project. Next project is going to be uh, the Alucab water tank. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified of that next video coming out. And uh, we'll see you down the trails.